At age six, Enrique Ramirez was like a lot of other first graders. I think my mom was real proud of me. I know I was proud. I was gonna do something. I was a Boy Scout. Learn how to tie them knots and do the right things. One thing I never did read that book that they gave us. We got 31 kids in here. And I'll just tell you the ones that could read. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of them were the smart ones in the class. All of us had reading and writing problems. Nobody knew. I guess that's where it started. Of the millions of children who start school each year, two out of 10 do not learn to read or write. I started hanging around some other guys. We started getting into a lot of things, started getting into trouble. We started breaking into our schools. We started a lot of fights and riots up at our school. The teachers went on strike. We trashed the school. Three out of 10 students drop out before finishing high school. Ninth grade, I thought that was it for me. Tried to hang myself in the basement. I couldn't do it. It just broke and snapped. I fell. That's where I thought my life was going to be. I was going to end up in the street. Something happened, and I slipped through the system. Of the students who do finish high school, one out of four still lacks basic literacy skills. It's scary when you can't go shopping, or it's your doctor says, I want you to go to x-rays. Go down the hall, you'll see the signs. You go down the hall and just take an elevator and go home. You're missing something, and it's scary. It's estimated that as much as half of America's workforce has reading and writing problems. I work in the airline industry, and I was what we call a cargo handler. They offered me a job in management. I was ready to quit, because I was scared. I have to do more paperwork. I have to read, I have to write. I got to do more things. I, I can't do that. But to tell them that I can't read and can't write, I'd get fired. When parents can't read and write, their children are twice as likely to lack literacy. What brought me to learn how to read and write was actually, it was my son. Now I see my son coming up to me, asking me to read him a bedtime story. And I'm pushing him away. Any other parent who can read and write that is no problem. But my problem was I couldn't do this little simple thing. I mean, if your son was to come up to you and ask you to pour a glass of milk and you don't have the hands to do it, then you would understand, because that's what it's like. You're helpless. And what do you have? Anger. And I was tired of anger. I was tired of having my self-esteem down, and I didn't want to pass that on. At 28, Enrique found out about a nearby library literacy program. So I was laying in bed one night, and I seen this advertisement on TV about some guy who didn't know how to read and write, and he's going through a reading program. And it's 1 o'clock in the morning, and I write the number down, and I call. 1 o'clock in the morning, I'm ready to learn. I want to learn to read now. So I call him up, and they asked me, you know, to come on down. They gave me the address. So I went down there, and I was nervous parked my truck, realized it was a library. Hmm, this is weird. Library. I thought people just went to a library to read. But, you know, libraries do other things. They hooked me up with a tutor. We go, we meet, and she asked me, what do you want to do? All I want to do is read a bedtime story. That's all I want to do now. And I tell you, that was the hardest book in my life, but it was the most beautiful book I ever read in my life, because it's probably the only book I ever read in my life. My tutor, I think, has a lot of patience, because I'm pretty tough. <laughs> you know, I just, I, I can't get it. I get frustrated. I'll put my pencil down. I, I don't get it. But she doesn't get mad. She doesn't get a ruler out and spank my hand, and she doesn't sit me in the corner. I don't need that. You know, I'm a grown man. I have a problem. She understands it. Every year, library literacy programs 
changed the lives of thousands of people. It's given me the ability to go from state to state, knowing where I'm going, besides recognizing a tree or a building. It's given me the ability to go see my son when he was born, because I knew where it said newborn. It's given me the ability to read a book. It's given me the ability to go get the right medicine for my children or for my wife. It's given me a second chance of life. I first started working at United, and they're computerized. And it's scary because I had no idea to use a computer. And I remember this friend of mine knew I had a problem. And he showed me step by step by step how to use the keys. He taught me, now I do it. Now I go up to it. Boom. I do doom, doom, done, bang, gone. Hey, pff, this thing it ain't nothing. I'm proud. I, pff, I'll buy me 10,000 computers. I'll run them all. I feel good now. I always wanted to write something to my father. I wanted to tell him how I miss him. I wanted to tell him how I really, really felt about him. Because we were never close. And by putting it on paper it meant a lot to me. I messed up on the spelling. I messed up on punctuation. I messed up on everything. But again, the words meant something to me. After a few years in the program, Enrique passed his GED test. I never graduated from high school. I don't know what it's like. I want to. I'd love to walk off stage in a cap and gown, but I don't think I'll ever see that. This is what happened. I slipped. I'm one of thousands of people. My son is not going to be a part of that cycle. My daughter's not going to be a part of that cycle. My child is going to know how to read. And I'm not going to let my son have the same problems that I have. It's time for him to be better than I am. We're together, learning together. It's a good picture. I like that one.